Good morning, Falcons. I'm Abby Buell. And I'm Vanessa Torres. And this is the Falcon Report. The regional and state science fairs will be virtual this year. It's never too soon to start the paperwork. Email Mr. Palmer at the address on the screen to be added to the Science Fair Canvas course, a one-stop shop for all your science fair information. Seniors, don't forget senior pictures are due to yearbook staff on November 29th. Please send your photo with your name to the address on the screen. You will be sending confirmation that your photo was received. Now, here's cinema according to Connor. This is my first episode of my show, and so I thought I'd talk about something that fascinates me, and I, I think it's too often overlooked. Color in movies. On September 13th, 1917, scientists and movie producers got together to create the first Technicolor film, The Gulf Between, a romantic comedy. But since it was a new science, the movie turned out as a total flop. Some people in Hollywood thought that Technicolor was unnecessary, but soon after the beginning, many hit classics came out in Technicolor and jump-started the industry. Most movies have a color palette, and some of them are much more interesting than others. Wes Anderson, for example, always creates awesome, unique colors that keep throughout the whole film. Creators choose colors that create a mood for the movie, and the palette usually consists of two to four main colors. Walter Mitty and The Dark Knight both have a darker and cooler tone to represent a dreary lifestyle, while The Incredibles 2 and Scott Pilgrim use brighter reds and yellows to create more vibrant other worlds. In early Hollywood, color was used simply to create more color and immersive experience, but eventually creators started using color to tell a story. Each color evokes a certain emotion, and so creators started to use that. In La La Land and Interstellar, the costumes represent what the character's personality is and their intentions. In Wonder Wheel, in this amazing scene, the lighting changes uh, depending on which character is getting closer to their goal. And in Drive, the color of the surroundings of the characters represent their surroundings in the real world. She's involved in a warm, inviting family life, and he's involved in a dark, dangerous life of crime. Another way that color is used is by changing the color as the story progresses. In La La Land, life is perfect at the beginning, and so, bright colors. And as the movie gets more realistic, the colors become more green, blue, and purple. Even in my new superhero movie I'm working on, the blue represents the friendless superhero world, and the yellow represents his new life. As he gets closer to each, the color changes. So hopefully I taught you all a little bit about color in movies, and I hope I sparked some of your interests. See you next time. Cyber Patriot Club is up and running. If you want to join or find out more, please email Mrs. Violet at the address on the screen. Here's Friday's schedule. TSA Podcast Club and Video Production Club are about to get started. For this year, if you are interested in creating your own podcasts, short films, broadcast productions, for fun, or competition, please reach out to Mrs. LaViolet at the address on the screen.
Did you miss Falcon Trivia the last two weeks? Well, let Scott make it up to you with a new spin on trivia. Take a look at Falcon Trivia 2.0. Hello everybody, and welcome to the very first edition of Falcon Trivia 2.0. I'm your host, Scott Barthus. For the inaugural episode, I thought it'd be fitting to start it all off with this question. In what year was Hanford High School founded? 1969, 1972, 1976, 1980. Alright, time's up. Do you have your answer? Let's see if you were right. And 1972 was the correct answer. According to the school profile, Hanford was originally built as a K-12 school, a remodel was completed in 2006, and last year, the school served a total of 2,079 students. Incredible. That's today's Falcon Trivia 2.0 question. If you have any tantalizing trivia tidbits that you'd like to share, don't hesitate to send it our way at falcontrivia2.0 at gmail.com. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. That's all for today. I'm Vanessa Torres. And I'm Abby Buell, and this has been The Falcon Report.